Hi, my name is Sue from Tranquil Tea House Therapies. I'm a Reiki master and I'm a qualified aromatherapist. Today I'm going to give you some information about the safe use of essential oils, which coincides with the 8th of June being the beginning of Aromatherapy Awareness Week. Now using essential oils at home is becoming more and more popular because essential oils support our body's natural healing process and enhances our mental and physical well-being. The value of using essential oils for healing, cleansing, preserving and mood enhancing has been recognised since way back to the Egyptian times. So it's a great tool to use for your daily self-care. Now aromatherapy and essential oils should be used alongside regular medical care and not as an alternative. So what are essential oils? Well, essential oils are volatile liquid components from um, aromatic plants. And volatile means that um, it's, it's quick to evaporate from a liquid into a vapor. So always make sure that you replace the cap on your bottle as soon as possible after you've used it. Now essential oils can be extracted from different parts of the plant. The flower heads and uh, the leaves, they're used from the lavender plant, petals from roses, leaves and flowering tops for basil, cinnamon comes from the bark um, and ginger from the root of the plant. Uh, gums and resins like frankincense come from trees and these are just a few examples of the various ways that um, essential oils are extracted. Each essential oil has a unique chemical composition so um, that they have a, either a stimulating, a balancing or a relaxing effect on the body and the mind. So essential oils, they're natural, but they are very concentrated and they are powerful, which is why we must use them with care. So how do essential oils work? Well, one way is by um, inhaling the aroma. And as you can see on this little diagram here, the aromatic molecules are um, breathed in through the nose and they pass straight into the bloodstream via the lungs. So just in the same way as oxygen and that effect is almost instant. And as we breathe in, the odours um, from the oil um, stimulate the nerve endings, which is in the olfactory bulb at the back of the nose here. Now, this stimulates the, um, of the limbic system um, in the brain. And now the limbic, limbic system is associated with our emotions and our memories. So um, this is then processed um, and neurochemicals are then released and, and they can be either relaxing, stimulating or sedating, depending on which um, essential oil has been in, inhaled. Now the second way that um, essential oils can work is by applying them to your skin, which is topically. So essential oils are absorbed into the skin and then into the, that get, goes into the bloodstream and then they are transported around the body. Now for topical use, essential oils should be used with um, a carrier, either an oil or a cream, so that it can be massaged into the body. So where do we get our essential oils from? Well, health food shops and chemists, you'll probably find there the Tisserand brand. You can also um, get your oils from an independent consultant that runs, a, that runs their own home business, and that might be Neil Yard or um, doTERRA, which is where I get most of my oils from. Now you can buy your oils from the internet, but please only buy from a re reputable company um, like Absolute Aromas. Um, it's important to make sure that the Latin name is um, on the bottle and also that there is safety data. And the safety data is usually, um, you'll often find there's a leaflet inside your packet that's got the information for that particular oil and how it should be used. Now there's many places that are selling cheap oils that appear to be a bargain. But as with all things, you only get what you pay for. So buying from a reputable source, you know that the oils are of the highest quality and that they have been tested by an essential oil chemist. They should be pure, natural and unadulterated.
You want to be confident that each oil is ethically sourced from established producers in the best country of origin for that particular oil. Essential oils are sourced from all over the world and this often reflects the cost of the oils. As you can imagine, to produce a bottle of rose essential oil, it takes a lot of rose petals. Now changes in the environment can also have a dramatic effect in both the quality and the quantity of a crop and this can also influence the availability of an oil as well as the cost. So it's equally important that the carrier oil or carrier cream that you use is also of a high quality and where possible I prefer to use organic um, carriers. Now there's lots of ways to use essential oils. You can inhale them straight from the bottle or you could put a few drops onto a tissue or use a roller ball and you can wear it um, if you're using a roller ball then you can just use that like a perfume you just add a little bit and you can smell it then as you go about your day now these methods are really convenient um, because they're portable and you can carry them around with you either in your pocket or in your handbag um, and they're great um, if you suffer from seasonal allergies um, or if you need some emotional support you know if you've got an important meeting or something that you're anxious about you know that's going to help you to get through your day now in the car you could put a few drops onto a cotton wool ball um, gently wedge it near the air vent or you can also buy um, little diffusers that you plug into your cigarette lighter you pop a few drops of oil onto the little pad pop it in here um, and then the warmth from the cigarette lighter um, helps to give out the um, aroma this little diffuser um, is also you can use it in the car it's got a, it's got an adapter for using in the cigarette lighter but uh, this particular one you can also use at home which is great at home um, you can use a diffuser like this one here for larger areas or you could use a room spray you just oop. making sure of course that if you've got any pets you leave the door open just in case they don't like the smell and they want to leave now you can even add a couple of drops of oil onto a dish of water and put that onto a warm radiator if you haven't got a diffuser now the choice of oils would depend on what you need now in the car you might want oils that are going to keep you focused and alert particularly if you've got a long journey so something like rosemary or peppermint would be great for that um, if you've got seasonal allergies this time of the year that could be a problem for you so you could either diffuse in the car or even at home lavender lemon eucalyptus and then at night time you might want something more relaxing and sleep inducing like lavender chamomile or vetiver now another way to use essential oils is by massage and if you've got a willing partner that's great but if not you can always massage yourself obviously it's not quite the same but it is possible you can do it and you will get the benefit of putting the oils onto your skin to be absorbed you choose a carrier um, maybe an oil like sweet almond oil fractionated coconut oil or if you've got somebody who's got a nut allergy grapeseed oil is the go-to oil for those by using a carrier there is less likelihood of the essential oil causing an irritation to those that have got sensitive skin because the carrier oil or cream it helps um, to dilute the, um, the oil and it also helps the absorption of the oil into the skin because as we said the oil evaporates quite readily so um, a carrier will help it to go into the into the skin um, and not just evaporate so with massage because you've got the actual the physical um, process of rubbing and you know massaging this can help to improve circulation and it can also relieve muscular tension so if you've got um, any aches and pains um, perhaps you've um, been out in the garden you've been gardening or you've been sat for a long while at the computer um, then warming oils like black pepper or ginger will help the muscles to relax 
but maybe you want to have a massage just purely for the relaxation you know maybe you've not got any aches and pains but you're feeling a little bit um, a little bit like you need to relax and a massage can help to lift away the stresses of your day and you would choose an oil that um, is going to help you to feel good choose one that you like um, and for me that would be either chamomile or rose because those are my favorite blends now essential oils can also be added to your bath but first of all, you need to add them to something that's going to enable them to dissolve in the water. Now, as we know, oil floats on water, so it doesn't mix in. And this can cause skin, skin irritation. So either by using a foam bath base or some solubilizer to, to disperse the oils, um, that helps the, uh, prevents it, the oils from just sitting on the top. So you would add the, um, the base or the solubilizer with the essential oils in it to the water once the bath is full. Otherwise, you know, by the time you get in, you've lost the therapeutic effects of the oils. Now, perhaps you don't want a full bath, but you've got sore, tired feet then why not just you know have a foot bath this can be really reviving if you add a few drops of essential oils to some you know comfortably warm water not too hot soak your feet for about 10 minutes um, you could use something like lavender sweet marjoram and if you know particularly if you've got any discomfort um, but if you've got sweaty feet something like tea tree or rosemary that will help with um, sort of deodorizing these um, your feet for you. Now another way that we can use our oils is um, by making a compress which could be either a hot or a cold compress because these that's a very effective way to relieve pain and reduce um, inflammation. So you'd add a couple of drops of essential oil to a bowl of water be that a hot, hot water or cold water depending on you know what you're going to uh, use it for. You'd soak a flannel in that water and then squeeze out the excess and place it on the affected area and then you would replace it either if it was a hot um, if it was a hot compress you'd replace it as it cooled down or if it was a cold compress you'd replace it when it warmed up but hot compresses are very good for things like backache earache toothache that sort of thing and a cold compress is really good if you've got um, headaches or any sprains and strains Moving on to toiletries, you can add essential oils to your everyday toiletries. Maybe get a fragrance free um, base product. Um, I always make my own toiletries now. I make shower gels, shampoos, face creams, um, and I also make them for my clients. I do an initial consultation to check my client's general health, so um, check if they're on any medication and just to see what their diet and their lifestyle is like. And then we'd select a few essential oils to support wherever the client you know, needs it. So each product is made to order um, and it's specifically for them. So they've chosen the oils and because I use um, organic um, or natural bases, you've got no nasty toxins in those products. So that's, you know, that's a good way to be using essential oils on a daily basis. Now you do need to be sure to use the correct amount of essential oils because less is often more when it comes to essential oils. Now, some people have made the mistake of thinking, oh, you know, I'm sleeping really badly. Um, I'll sprinkle lots of lavender over my pillow so that I sleep well. But in fact, if you use too much lavender, it's got the opposite effect. And instead of being calming and relaxing, it acts as a stimulant. So you're going to find it a lot more difficult to get to sleep. Now, as we know, there are lots of different essential oils. So make sure that you are well informed as to how the oil that you've chosen affects the body. Do some research either online or, you know, there's plenty of good books. But, you know, ultimately speak to a qualified aromatherapist. They'll always be willing to help any, you know, any queries that you've got that, you know, just ask. Also in the home, we can use essential oils for, um, in our cleaning products. Um, and by doing that, we can reduce our exposure to toxin laden sprays and chemicals that, you know, that we use for our cleaning. Now, storage. 
Storage of essential oils is usually in dark glass bottles. Keep them upright and at a steady temperature, away from direct sunlight. So don't leave them on a sunny windowsill. Now they're better kept in a cooler environment than a warm one because essential oils, they do deteriorate, they will go off. Some people I know will keep their essential oils in the fridge, but this, you know, it's not really necessary. Um, although if you do have a blend that's been made up for you for something like hot flushes, um, then you know, keeping it in the fridge, you're gonna get an added benefit for that when you use it. Now, if you've got a few bottles of essential oils, you might want to invest in a wooden box to keep them in. Um, it keeps them in the dark um, and obviously um, it keeps them a tidy and you know where they are. Now these boxes are readily available online from places like Amazon or eBay, um, Absolute Aromas, they have some as well. And as you can see, this one's from doTERRA um, and this is obviously, you know, once you've got a few more oils, you need a bigger box. Now, um, Keeping these uh, essential oils in boxes is a great way you can keep them away from children and pets. Now, most essential oils, they don't have um, a childproof lid on them. So um, it is very important that you do make sure they are out of reach because if a child was to ingest essential oils, it could cause serious damage or even death. Um, and one of the important things to notice as well when you're buying your oils is to make sure that there is a dropper in the, you know, in the bottle at the top, because even if a child did pick this up, they are not gonna get as much coming out or as quickly if you've got that reducer in there for the drops. So that is an important thing to, to bear in mind. Now, essential oils, they are flammable. So obviously be careful. They, they will corrode plastic, which is why they are kept in glass bottles. Um, and they can also damage polished surfaces. So don't put them down on, you know, on a um, you know, highly polished table or something like that, because it could damage the, the surface. Um, and they could even perish rubber. So just just be beware and if you've got any spillage sometimes there's spillage make sure that you just give them a wipe before you put them down now essential oils if used correctly they are safe and they are enjoyable to use but because they're concentrated and powerful you do need to you know to take care if you've got any concerns about how to use them um, please contact me or another qualified aromatherapist now, I'm, I'm just going to run through a list of specific circumstances that you need to be aware of when you're using essential oils. Now, generally, essential oils should not be taken internally. Some brands of essential oils say that they are so pure that they can be taken internally. And to this, I would say, do your research and make an informed choice. You know, I'm happy to discuss this topic further with you if you want to get in touch. Now you should also need to make sure that you keep the uh, essential oils away from eyes and from mucous membranes because that can cause irritation. If you're pregnant or you're thinking of becoming pregnant, some of the oils are to be avoided completely and some can be used in certain stages of pregnancy. Now usually, um, we would use a 2% dilution of essential oils, but for babies, young children and the elderly, um, a 1% dilution or maybe even less should be used because their skin is more likely to be extra sensitive. Now, if you have a medical condition such as epilepsy, um, high or low blood pressure or asthma, um, then, you know, or even if you're taking medication, you really should consult um, a professional, um, either uh, aromatherapist or medical advice. And if you do have any adverse reaction to an essential oil, stop using it immediately. So as I've said before, you know, uh, don't use essential oils undiluted on the skin, always use a carrier, either oil or a cream or some other medium. Now some essential oils, um, and in particular the citrus oils, can cause the skin to be more sensitive 
and this is called photosensitivity. They're more sensitive to the UV, ra UV rays of the sun. So if you've put on an essential oil somewhere on the skin, um, do not go out into the sun for um, at least 48 hours after you have um, after you have applied the oils because um, it can cause you to burn um, more quickly. Now some essential oils they also have specific contraindications like they may interfere with homeopathic remedies so always seek advice. So use your essential oils regularly so that you can keep your body and your mind in balance. Don't wait for a crisis before you reach them add them to your daily self-care regime. Now I hope this information has been useful to you. There's an awful lot here. So hopefully you're still awake. Um, and if there's anything else that you would like me to go over or you want advice about anything, you know, please contact me um, and I will, you know, I will help you and I will point you to oils that are gonna suit you. So thank you very much for listening and I hope that you enjoy using your essential oils.